In terms of the ingredients that go into making a Formula One car go fast, downforce is absolutely one of the key things in doing that. Downforce is the vertical component of the aerodynamic forces acting on the car. So as any engineer will tell you, there are three forces and three moments. So the downforce is the vertical one, the drag is a longitudinal one and the side force is the lateral, and then there are three moments that operate around those axes. But downforce is probably the most important one in terms of the car performance in the corners. When the downforce levels change, what we feel within the car is when you reduce the downforce levels, the car slides around a little bit more, you have less grip in the corners, but you're going much faster down the straight, so you're a bit more streamlined. And on the flip side, when you put the maximum downforce settings on, you feel it's so much grip from that car. The car is stuck to the ground, you go through the corners so quick, but it does sometimes feel like you've got a bit of a parachute on your back when you're going down the straights. The reason we need downforce on the car is the more we can push the car down into the track, the faster we can go around corners. So if we haven't got enough downforce, we're never gonna be fast enough in the corners. In order to develop an aerodynamic package, we would start by thinking about the flow structures. So what flow structures do we want to make around the car to try and improve its performance? We would start by using CFD, which is computational fluid dynamics, to try and achieve these flow structures. So we'd iterate through a few geometries in that, trying to see if we've been successful. And then if we thought we'd managed to achieve what we were after and it was looking competitive, we would then decide to take that for a wind tunnel test. So to explain how the wind tunnel works, the best way is to actually go to the track first and look and explain about, so you've got the car on the track, the car moves through the air and goes around the track. In the wind tunnel, we flip this. So the car or the model is stationary. We move the road underneath the model and then we pull the wind over it. And this way we're simulating the same relative motion between the car, the road and the air as you would see on the track. Under the new air restrictions, we get slightly more wind tunnel time than the team that's in first place in the championship. Basically, it's split up into two sections in the year. Your position in the championship on the 1st of January and your position in the championship on the 1st of July. So at the beginning of this year, on the 1st of January, we were world champions, so we had less wind tunnel time than we do now as we're third in the championship. So we now have more wind tunnel time than our competitors. These aerodynamics in Formula One are so sophisticated. Whenever you've got a bit of a crosswind or tailwind, 20, 30, 40 kilometer hour gusts, it totally changes the feeling of that car. So when you go into a corner, you've got a headwind, you're approaching that corner slower, you've got more downforce as that wind is pushing the car into the ground. So you can go around the corner quicker and it feels really, really great to drive. But on the flip side, if you're going into a corner with a 40 km hour tailwind, you're approaching quicker, there's less downforce on the car, it all feels a bit light because you've got the wind behind you, and that's often when you see uh, drivers making mistakes. Of the sort of downforce generating parts of the car, the vast majority comes from the floor, with fairly big contributions from both the front wing and the rear wing. People talk about the 22 cars as having ground effect aerodynamics. In actual fact, all Formula One cars for a long time have had ground effect aerodynamics. It's not a new thing. What's different this year is because the floors are lower, we no longer have the 50 mil step plane, then the effect of the ground proximity to the underfloor of the car is much bigger. And therefore, the sort of contribution of the ground effect is larger. So the wind tunnel is a tool for developing the aero package of the car. It's very important, particularly as we have no track testing in season anymore. It's very important when we're developing new packages to go to the track that we assess their performance and their stability. So essentially the entire car is generating downforce, the floor, the bodywork, even the suspension members. They're creating some kind of lift or downforce. And the trick in the wind tunnel is to try and get these working together to get the maximum performance from the car. People think that um, the biggest effect of downforce is at high speed, where the aerodynamic loads are the largest. But because the car spends so much time in the low speed, and that's where you've got the biggest sort of time loss around the circuit, actually the downforce there is also really important. 
Broadly speaking, the cars are generating similar downforce now to on the old regulations. And to try and give you some perspective, about 150 kph, the car generates as much downforce as it does in weight. And by the time you get to the end of straight, it's probably three to four times the weight of the car. So if you were to look and try and do a plot of where downforce is most important, it's in the low and the medium speed corners. The location, the environment, the weather conditions, very kind of windy tracks, very gusty tracks can cause us problems in that we've got a very large range of conditions that the car's going to see. So it's very important the car can perform through that whole envelope of conditions. Other places that can be tricky, for example, in Mexico, where we're at high altitude, which means we've got very low air density. There's a lot of things that, that kind of we have to think about in relation to that. One of them is the overall cooling of the car. We just don't have as much mass flow going through the radiators, the brake ducts, and so we need to really think carefully about cooling. Mexico, we run a max downforce wing, but it doesn't hold us back on the straight in nearly the same way as it normally would. So we can run a max downforce wing, which we would normally run in, say, Monaco, but we can reach the same speed at the end of the straight. So that's what makes it such an outlier, is these trade-offs are very different for us. When we race in Mexico, the car feels totally different because of the high altitude there. So we have less air to push the car into the ground. So we're all running our maximum downforce options, but it really doesn't have that same effect. And so that's a really unique factor of the Mexican Grand Prix and why it's always quite fun to race there.